Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today I need to make a quick hostess gift and I need to have it done by tomorrow night. Now I have a lot of patterns that are go-to patterns but the one in particular that I really like is a dimensional pinwheel. It's very easy to make, very quick. Basically all you need are squares and they all have to be the same size and it's whatever square size that you want. I like to make my squares at four and a half inches because that way in the long run I will end up with an eight inch finished square. So I have here in front of me a piece of leftover fabric. The green fabric is 14 and a half inches by 34 and the black is the width of the entire fabric which would be your 45 inches. So I am going to cut this into four and a half inch segments. So I'm going to start and I'm going to cut four and a half inches, four and a half inches, four and a half inches. Then I'm going to take them all and cut them into four and a half inch squares. Now just out of curiosity, let's time this and see how long it takes to make this project. And you will be surprised, it is a very quick project to put together. Let's get going. Okay, the strips are cut. Now I'm ready to cut my four and a half inch squares. So far, five minutes. Now in order to speed this up, what I've done is I've marked my ruler. So I've put tape underneath at the four and a half inch mark. And then I've put another piece of tape as a T line. So I know that's not the side of the ruler I use. So now I don't have to count every cut I'm going to make. I know I'm going to stop right where that line is. 15 minutes so far. This is what I've had cut out. These will be leftovers. Who knows, I might find something to do with them. And I was actually able to cut out five finished blocks because each block is going to be eight inches and you need eight squares to make an eight inch block at four and a half inch squares. I don't know that I will be using these, so right now I'm just going to put them aside and concentrate on just this little four piece quilted tablecloth. So these are in stacks four and four, four and four, four and four, so each one of these I know will make a block. Take two of them and take them to the iron and we're going to press this entire stack into your pinwheel dimensionals. This is very easy to iron and you'll iron them all at once. Take your point to your point, you're going to make a triangle, iron it. On the folded edge, you will fold it again and you're going to iron it. And you need to have this stack all ironed because they're going to match into this. Okay, another five minutes of pressing. And each of these triangles are folded, pressed, and the little opening is all going to be in the same area. And that way you'll have them all set up to go. The next stage is really easy. The black triangles are going to go to the green. The green are going to go on the black. Take two of your four and a half inch blocks and you're going to lie them side by side. Take one of your triangles that are already pressed, you're going to put it along this edge and you will see that it is the same size. Flip this over and you're going to sew down here a quarter of an inch. Now you're going to do this for the green and the black. But keep in mind that it would be really nice if you can keep them all in the same order. So I like to stack them and get them all ready to go. So it took me five minutes to stack them. And you will notice that I do have four and four left over. That is correct. Now let's get them to the machine and we're going to sew a quarter inch on all of these seams. 15 minutes, all of my stacks have been sewn together 
and I have put them all in order and I have not pressed them but what I have done is I've kept them all in the right order. The next stage is very easy. Let's start with the one stack. Okay, here's my stack and all of them are in the same direction with the opening here. This will make two blocks. So let's separate them in piles of two. Take this one and you're going to turn it here. This one and you're going to turn it here. Now you have the opening here and the opening here. Open and open. Now the next stage is very easy. You're going to take your leftover triangles that you have and you're going to have this is the fold, this is the fold, they're going to butt together. Opening, opening, fold, fold, open, open, raw edge, raw edge. Now you need to get this little corner underneath this piece. Take a couple of stitches out. You will be able to lay that underneath and put that back over top. The threads will come out just with a little tug and that corner will tuck right in. Now this is an area where you can pin it. Now it is as simple as taking the two sides and putting them together. And those seams will nestle together. At this part I do like to put pins here and a pin here just to secure it. So I have my four blocks all ready to go. Now you need to sew a quarter inch along this seam. Now you might find it easier if you start here and sew to the corner. Put your needle back in here and sew to this corner but you can sew it any way you want as long as you have that quarter inch seam there. So another 10 minutes pinning. Now let's see how long we are at the machine. Okay, maybe another 10 minutes at most because we've only had to sew four seams. And when you flip them open and take out your pins, this will fall right into place and you have a perfect very cute pinwheel and you still have your quarter inch around. Let's get them all opened and see what they look like. It's as cute as can be. We're going to put the two together here, the two together here, then we will sew these two seams together. So we need to sew that together. When you flip them they will nestle together and you will have that quarter inch match up perfectly. So up to now I've had to do no pressing. I sewed the two seams here and then I sewed here. Now I'm going to take it to the iron and I'm going to press it. Now when you press them, all of these seams will open up into a little pinwheel and that will keep the seams nice and flat. If they don't, you just need to give them a little curl with your hands. A couple of stitches will come apart and they will lie flat. Now we need to get a border on it. So the last thing I did was add a three inch border. I put the three inch on the two sides here first and then the three inch on the two ends. So it's nice and square. We're at about 50 minutes. We're under an hour so far and all we have left to do is quilt it. Okay, this is all sandwiched and ready to go. The back is on, the batting is on, and the top is all pressed. And I've used a batting that fuses together so that I don't have to take time and pin base this. Now what you want to do is put your walking foot on because you're going to just straight stitch the quilting on this. I would recommend starting in one corner, stitching all the way through to the next corner. And you will do the same thing. So you're going to start off with one big X. From there, you are just going to continue that X theme and you are going to go through each section here. So you will go from there, and you will go from here, here, and here. So what will happen is each one of these squares 
will have a stitch line right through the center from corner to corner. Now you can mark it with a pencil if you want or you can just mark it with your masking tape or whatever tape that you want to use and it will make it easier so you do not have to actually put any pencil mark on it. And all you need to do is just lift these out of the way when you're quilting. So let me get that stitching done and then I will do another row of stitching and it will go around the outside. Okay, this will give you a better view on how I quilted it. And of course, this is going to be trimmed off. There we have it. So, the last thing is going to be to trim it up and put the binding on. And I will have a complete finished table topper. And it is ever so cute. And it took me less than two hours from the cutting to the sewing to actually having it quilted. Now this is a very easy block to do. It looks a lot harder than it is and it looks absolutely amazing in little children's fabrics because the children love to put their little fingers on those pinwheels and pull them around. You can use leftover fabric, you can even use fun and funky fabric because it's amazing how it will turn out with perhaps something like this would be fun. I'm so glad you joined me today. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come back again and let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.